You guys got it? Okay. Wow. Ah, the kitchen is crackling this morning. And it's an all new episode of the Will Arnett Breakfast Podcast. Will. So get your turkey bacon ready because hey, we're about to sizzle up some stuff. Hang subjects on, hang on. The- we're doing smartless. We're doing. We're still doing smartless. Yeah, yeah it's the only After, one. It's okay. the only one. Yeah. But we're. Are we gonna get to the breakfast? No, you should have had breakfast already, dude. Oh, uh, okay. Um. All right. It's an all new smartless. Smart. So your mic's coming in from over the top today, huh? You're usually uh, under mic'd, aren't yeah, you? I'm using my 87, which is my broadcast mic. Oh yeah. Will you? Ha- it looks like you have sweat coming off your. Yeah. I'm, Will, I'm are you sorry. nervous? I was running around. I am actually nervous, but I was also running around <sighs> trying to get my mic fixed, and I could not fix it, and. Um, and that caused all that sweat. How did you break your mic? Did you have a bad uh, uh, peanut butter uh, chocolate session? <laughs> what's uh what's the name of the oh you know what uh, i would say about that joke it's about, lazy yeah. it was it's lazy. lazy i'm just pissed off because i still don't have free reese's you threw around yeah. a, just a bunch of info but it was it was lazy you didn't you didn't put it together no i don't usually well i'm tell not you what's really right. well put to, i tell you what's really well, well put together it's a reese's peanut butter cup are you sorry i'm not sorry <laughs> he's, a, he's the best. God. Wait, but he's Will, trying best. to fix your microphone whipped up all that sweat that's dripping from your face and your body? Wait, what's wrong? Yeah, usually one doesn't really sweat when you just plug yeah, stuff in. I had, to run up, I had to run upstairs, get some pliers, get some things. Oh. It's hot in here. I uh-huh. just took a sauna. Oh, that's why. But the air you have air conditioning on, right? No, he's still sweating yeah, from the sauna. I'm, I'm like, I worked out. I got, you know what okay, I mean? Okay, uh, okay. Sean, did you exercise at all today? Were you, are you, did, were you helpful to your body? No, not at all. No? Well, I want to tell you a little story, something that happened to me and Scotty. I want to hear a story. I want to hear okay. a story about you and Scotty. Okay, okay, here we go. So it was a couple weeks ago. Scotty and I uh, had a dinner to go to, and I walk out of the closet, <laughs> and I walk out of the closet, and he says, he says, are you really going to wear that? And I'm like, what's wrong with it? And he said, it's too matchy-matchy. We can't bo- both wear the same color red shirt. It looks weird. And I was like, what do you mean this is dark green? And he said, no, By the way, it's I red. haven't owned a red shirt since I was four. Oh, I have a red shirt. And I, have a red- and I said, we, we can't wear the same. It's, I said, mine is green. He said, no, it's red. And we just both looked at each other because we both knew that how colorblind I am. Oh. And I was like, oh, and I just and I switched shirts. But when I was younger, I worked at The Gap. Remember? And girls would come in and they want to put together outfits for their boyfriends. This is what reminded me of this. And I'd be all confident and they'd walk out with like a mustard yellow sweater and shit brown pants <laughs> and like a bright red shirt. None of it matched. And the coworkers would be like, after the transaction was done, they'd be like, hey, are, are you okay? Because that was, <laughs> that looks terrible. And they were like, are you sure? I was are like, yeah. Are you clowning our customers? Now, are you doing it to fuck with them? No. no I, he's I was, colorblind. I was colorblind. I didn't really admit it. And so I was putting together God, these I outfits. I gotta start listening to what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was surprised. Probably that I, help, right? I should know that he's colorblind. Yeah. Well, it's gonna cut my questions. I'm super, half. super, super colorblind. You would think that uh, that that the gap that would be like the first test they would give you. Probably, I know they some don't sort of though. Security clearance, and then if you're colorblind. Right. Now you're colorblind, and what's the deal? You think that there's a cure in McDonald's food? Is that why you? I don't understand <laughs> well, the why correlation. Are you shoveling in so much McDonald's all the hey, time. Hey guys, I'm up for the challenge. Challenge, if that's what it takes. <laughs> but well, Chin uh, does not have a cure for I'm getting Chin Chin for dinner tonight. Not of a shocker. Of course you are. But, um, but it's so funny because those girls, because they didn't know like what looked good on their man. And I was like, I can take care of that. And I was putting together these outfits that were so ugly. Huh. Yeah. I believe it. Yeah, I don't, I'm not a big, anyway. Um, what I do want to do though, if I can switch gears for a second, I want to get to our guest because yeah. I am really excited. You asked me before if I was nervous. Yes, I am nervous. Um, it's not why I'm sweating, but it would not be unusual for me to sweat thinking about, you know, having this person on our podcast. This is somebody that I have a great, great deal of for real, what we call for real skis admiration for. Um, I don't think anyone says that. People, a lot of people, well, they're going to start so. saying it. For real skis admiration? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it makes it sound less important. God, he's so nervous. For Sean, real skis. Him, him, but I'm really, really nervous. Uh, right this person's been nominated, for, I think, for seven Academy Awards. Oh. Now I'm sweating. 
okay? Uh, received an, uh, an Academy Award in, in 20, 2009. I don't want to say what it's for because I don't want to give it away yet. Uh, could have received an Academy Award, in my view, probably five more times uh, for other roles. This is a guy who... Uh, has consistently delivered. I don't. I can't even name his movies because you're going to immediately know who he was. Okay, no. uh, the first time I actually met him was only a few years ago because his his brother played my dad. So for a minute he said that brother he was my my dad. fake uncle. Um, he's Wait. the guy who started working with his brother and his dad when he was super young, uh, and he has never stopped. And Michael all he's Douglas? done is really incredible, interesting stuff. It's none other than Mr. Jeff Bridges. Jeff Bridges. Oh, my uh, damn. Uh, God, I was so close. <laughs> Thanks for having oh, me, Will, and you guys. Hey, Jeff man. Bridges. What a pleasure. to be with you. I, I dig all of you guys so much. Oh, oh my, my gosh, God. Jeff, this is so cool to see yeah, you. Yeah, this is wonderful. Listener, first of all, you should know that Jeff is sitting in one of the yummiest looking rooms I've ever seen. This is this looks like a downstairs. Yeah. Sure. Uh, this looks like a basement. It's got a wood ceiling. It looks like a set. It looks like a set. No, well, it is. You got is it? it, Sean. This no. is the the barn from the horror house of Heaven's Gate. No, Wait, what are you no. talking about? Are you being serious? Michael Cimino, the director, you know, they were going to burn this the set down because the owner of the land didn't want it on his property. And Mike said, anybody want it? And I raised my hand huh? and we numbered the logs and we put it 400 miles south and set it up. And this is where no I've lived with my way. wife for about 40 years in Montana. Yeah. No way. No way, man. In Montana. Wow. Yeah. Oh my God! You know that you know that's a film I've never seen. Heaven's Gate. Oh uh, man! Now that that was the famous sort of like that it did like like the first big uh. studio flop. But but I've heard subsequently that it was really wasn't that big of a flop. No, it's well, it's kind of a masterpiece, man. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, it, it you know, so much of uh, your experience of seeing the movies is how you're pitched. You know what your your setup is when you go in. Yeah, yeah. And if you get these, you know, they had such terrible reviews. You know, right. one review was if they shaved Michael Cimino's head, they would find three sixes. <laughs> <laughs> he's oh a devil, and he's you know, making devil movies. <laughs> Oh my God! But, oh, it was just terrible. You know, there, there was such animosity between all the, the suits and the reporters and everything. But it's it's a brilliant movie. I would, uh, yeah, check it out if I was you. I think you might. Do. It's a long sucker. You know, it's yeah. about four hours long. My wife Sue just had a wonderful Photoshop. She was uh, taking pictures all through it, and Vilmos Zygmunt, the cinematographer, kind of took her under his wing and. Uh, mentored her, and there was this beautiful photo photographic exhibit that she's got in uh, Livingston, Montana, and, and we had the producer up and Joanne Corelli, and it was an exciting. Moment. And you're you're a great photographer too, correct? I, um, yes, my. Yeah, I feel like I'm, I've seen some really really cool wide angle black and white shots of uh, I want to say uh, Fisher King, um, or do you do it on every single movie? Just about every movie since Starman. Okay. Wow. And it's a it's called a wide lux camera, and it's a yeah. panning still camera. And uh, yeah, if you go on my site, okay. jeffbridges.com, All right. <laughs> look at the photography. Yeah. Section, and you will okay. see. Okay. That's a good plug. Stuff. You'd like that. Oh, but then you've got a rap gift for everybody. Every single film you do, it's just about very it's, smart. Yeah, yeah, and it's putting those things together. You know, the editing is tough because you take re, you know rolls and rolls. Yeah. Have you ever had some scumbag studio executive say, "Hey, hey, 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 we can't have you taking a bunch of photographs <laughs> on set"? No, man. Uh, no, no. And dare. the Thesbos, you know, us actors, you know, I know what it's like. You know, <laughs> to have a can any lens pointed at you that sure. freaks you a little bit. You know, but. You know, they, they, I haven't gotten any complaints. And I, you know, they'll give I'll give them the camera, and we'll you know jam a little bit. And right. Yeah. This they 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 getting the pictures too. I'm so excited you're here. This hey is so Jeff, cool. uh, so let me ask you a question. I want to kind of get into it for a second. So, 
Um, I took a you, picture with you, Will. Remember our picture that I gaffed? Yeah. Our our prom pose. Our prom pose was so good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. at some point, yeah, you have to show that to the guys. I know, I got to get that. I don't know where is that photo. I don't it's know so where good. that is. Who took it? Yeah. I, yeah, it's so good. And Jeff's sitting on my knee, and, and, um, and we were both doing press for something, and we were in New York, and, um, and he said, uh, you're playing my brother Bo's son, so I'm kind of like your uncle, your fake uncle. <laughs> and... Uh, but but I wanted to ask you about Bo, who I adore. And, yeah. And, yeah. yeah and, and By the way, guys, he played my dad on Will and Grace. And he played your dad on Will oh, and Grace. Oh, wow. Yeah. I think wow. he played my dad, too, um, in, a, in a, a thing called Thanksgiving Promise. That oh, of is, course. I, I think I was in that, too. I think I you think, were, too. I, I don't think we worked together, but I think yeah. both his sons were in it as well. Yes. Yeah. Um, wow! He, wait, he's played all of our. Dads. I think so. I that's wild, that crazy? man. So I have all of. I'm your uncle. Right? Yeah. I'm Uncle Jeff. <laughs> so, so Uncle Jeff. For, so Uncle yeah. Jeff. Uncle yeah. Jeff, answer me this. So you, you and your brother Bo and your dad um, Lloyd starred in Sea Hunt together. And this, oh, yeah. I was going to kind of say once again, uh, not unlike our friend Jason here, you started at a young age working in TV. Uh, how old yeah. were you, Jeff, when you started doing that, the sea hunt? Oh, I must have been eight or so. Mm. Wow. But I was, wow, eight, eight, I was uh, on my first movie, I was six months old. Oh, my God. And I heard you were a nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> John Cromwell was shooting a movie, and my parents were friends with him, and they needed a little baby in the shot. And Jane Greer was the actress, and so my mom said, oh, take my baby. <laughs> but I was a rather happy little kid, and uh -huh. uh, I needed to cry in the in the scene. <laughs> so my mom said to Jane, "Oh, just pinch him." <laughs> just pinch him. <laughs> and she did, and of course, no I cried. way. And now we cut oh, 35 years later, and I'm working with Jane in a movie called uh, "Against All Odds," which yeah. is a remake yeah. of her great movie, Out of the Past. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I'm, I'm, we have a scene together. And I say, Jane, I can't get there. I'm having some problems achieving the emotion I need in this scene. Would you just please pinch me? <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> so that gave us a good chortle. Do you have how how is your uh, how is your trick for crying? Everybody's got a different a different technique for crying oh, on camera. Is yeah. yours? Do you do you, do tears come easy to you? I don't think so, man. What do I do? I uh, I look at a photo of my dad. Oh, I, yeah. <laughs> what do you do? I look at a photo of my dad. It's a long. You story. do, and that does it. <laughs> no, no, sorry. You finish the sentence. He looks at a photo of his dad coming home. That home, <laughs> that, <laughs> yeah. makes, that makes him cry because he every time he it. hears tires squealing, it kind of triggers it too. <laughs> Gosh, it's always a challenge. How about you guys? What do you, you know? I'm Jason, I heard one time, I heard a rumor, Jason, come. when you were doing, this is a true story. Yeah, is when it? you were doing, this not a, I'm not setting myself up uh -huh. for a joke. <laughs> you, were doing, you were doing a scene on uh, Office Christmas Party, and everybody was cracking up in the conference room, right? Uh -huh. And everybody was going crazy, and they're all cracking up, and you were the only one, and you had to keep it together, and you are not. And Will Speck said to you, do you remember this? We talked about this about a year ago. And he said, you, what do you... How are you not cracking up? Everybody's cracking up. And you said, I just imagine all of them dying and terrible things happening to them. Yeah. I also, yeah, I also like. And I was play, like, what a psycho. I, I do something similar to that when people get the giggle fits, you know, on a, yeah. on a, on a oh. comedy or something. I, the only way I can keep a straight face is by just convincing myself that they are destroying the movie. With their childish, oh. sophomoric humor, I get like real <laughs> high and mighty and indignant internally. And that's, <laughs> her, that's her what a blast! <laughs> yeah, just I just I just find disgust in them. Well, that's fun. It can be very funny for the other Fesbos, man. Yeah, for the other Fesbos. Where to go, uh, yeah. um, Jeff? What's one of the What's one of the relationships that you um, cultivated on a, on a shoot that you now that that ended up in a lifelong friendship? Like, is there? Well, you know, a dream come true was doing Baker Boys with Bo. Yeah. Oh I mean, yeah! Can you imagine how much fun we had, That's man? Cool. I mean, yeah. You know, if if it was if it wasn't my brother, you know, you'd spend a lot of energy trying to figure out how do we create the illusion that we're brothers. Right. You know? Yeah. Right. Right. No, you didn't have to hand, you know mess with that. But. I still I think about you every day when I'm driving on Sunset Boulevard. That incredible. At Beverly Glen. Uh, Oh. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, against all odds, right? Against all odds. Oh, with Jimmy Woods. Oh, yeah. man. Oh, that, well, car, that car chase is Wasn't just, that great? It hasn't been beaten yet. 
That was an amazing thing, and uh, it was right by my parents' house there on Sunset. We had uh, every all the traffic going east locked off. Yeah. Right at rush hour, and there are all these people going home to the beach, and in the middle of the shot, and we're going 90 miles an hour, you're in the middle of the, oh, no, let's not go to the beach, and they'd hang a Yui, you know, and get in the shot. Oh, it was frightening, You couldn't shut down Sunset through all those rich homes right now today. Oh, God. They'd never put up with it. Yeah. No way. Point. You, you, Jeff, you did, there were a bunch of movies you did in a row that I, I mean, first of all, I feel like you've had like so many different kind of phases. You know what I mean? Like you started, you did all these things early on and you, you made a lot of great movies and last picture show. And then you did, and then the eighties, you, you know, you did against all odds and a bunch of other, I mean, amazing star man and all these other great movies. And then in the nineties, you did like a whole other, you had like, you keep on having these different phases and you made like, uh, Fearless, which I loved, which I thought was yeah, a really fantastic. underrated movie. That changed. That's hard to watch. I can't your, watch that movie. Your anymore. performance of a yeah. guy who has faced death and then now is and now is living his life with this fearlessness because of that experience. Great that concept. really spoke to me. It was, I, it was really impactful uh, to me. Your performance really, I really got it. I really connected with that. And then that was actually after you had done. Fisher King, and in the same way, I really connected with what that character went through in that in that movie, and your relationship with Robin uh, yeah. was incredible. And it was a Terry Gilliam directed, right? Uh, yeah, uh, man. Fisher King. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, movie. as you're you know, as you're mentioning these different movies, they start <laughs> they start to explode yeah. in my head. You know? <laughs> yeah, Fearless yeah. was uh, Peter Weir, who was just yeah. incredible. Yes. Yeah, Peter Weir's great. The director. Uh, that plane crash was just so oh. well done that I just, I can't, I can only watch it the once. Because he oh. literally puts you on a plane that's yeah. falling from the sky for minutes and minutes oh, and minutes. Yeah, that whole movie was, you know. But each one, they're like little lifetimes, aren't they? You know, yeah. each yeah. one is like a little incarnation, you know. And sometimes you get to work with the same people again. You mentioned Terry Gilliam. yeah. God, he was just so wild to work with. And Robin, you know, uh, <laughs> another kind of director wouldn't have la allowed Robin to do the kind of stuff that he would do. But, you know, we'd be working, you know, 16-hour days. It would be 4 o'clock in the morning. Everybody's dragging ass. And then Robin would get up. And he would start to jam on all of the cast and crew, you know. <laughs> and he would go on and on and start busting chops, you know. And other director, you know, would say, oh, okay, okay, Robin. But Terry would say, yeah, but what about him? You know, and Terry <laughs> would add him on and we'd go on for 15, 20 minutes. Oh, yeah, this is fun what we're doing. And we had the yeah. energy to complete the day. But Terry and I are still close. We... FaceTime all the time and catch up with each other. And uh, then we did a weird movie, probably the weirdest movie. I think the, I, certainly the weirdest movie I've ever made. Uh, and I think it might be the weirdest movie Terry made called Tideland. Oh, wow. I've never heard of that. I play a, a junkie rock star. And most of the movie, I play a carcass just dead. Overdosed, <laughs> but it, it's a very bizarre movie, and again, worth checking out. Um, with all the time that you've spent on sets and all of this, all of these sort of uh, families that you've that you've met and built, and then said goodbye to, right? All these 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 groups yeah. of, of crews and casts. Yeah. Um, how much? And you and you're usually in a leadership position such that you can affect the harmony the ecosystem the the yeah. the the whole situation there is that is that some is that an important thing to you you seem like the kind of guy where it would be and that you would enjoy sort of setting a a, a tone on the set so that we can all enjoy our work experience mm -hmm. that you strike me as that kind of guy you hit, you hit that's the most important yeah. thing yeah. i think I mean, my dad, you know, you mentioned Sea Hunt and, you know, working with him when I was eight, you know, a you know, little kid. And he would set me on his bed and teach me all the basics, you know. Uh, you know, don't you know, don't just say your lines. Listen to what I'm saying and then make that, you know, have something yeah. to do with the way you talk about it. Now go out of the room. Now come back and do it differently. You know, he would do all that stuff. But the main thing I learned from him was his uh, joy w at work. And whenever he came on the set, 
that was just contagious and was just yeah. shot out. I got to work with him as an adult twice <laughs> with Francis Coppola in Tucker. Sure. And oh. uh, blown away. Yeah. And that was such a gas, man, to you know, do that advanced pretending with my dad, you know, as an adult. Yeah. Like, we would jam so we had such fun, man. Advanced know. pretending. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, but but you know, that joy thing, you know, it, it you know, because it, it makes you relax, right? And then all the the best stuff can come out of that relaxation and you feel safe and you know, it's yeah. Yeah. And we will be right back. Hey, we get support from Article, and specifically, you should know Will Arnett got a great deal of support from Article. Got two fresh Burkles. Those are sweet chairs, so I hear. Article has just launched their new line of outdoor products for summer 22. Think oversized statement loungers, streamlined dining pieces, and easy-to-style sofas for all your backyard needs. With 42 new pieces, plus a selection of bestsellers from seasons past, Article has what you need to outfit the deck of your dreams this summer. Article combines the curation of a boutique furniture store with the comfort and simplicity of shopping online and the generosity of someone like, let's say, Will's mom. Their team of designers focuses on beautifully crafted pieces, quality materials, and durable construction. They're dedicated to a modern aesthetic of mid-century Scandinavian industrial and bohemian designs. Fast, affordable shipping is available across the U.S. and Canada and is free on orders over $999 or just if you will. All in-stock items are delivered in two weeks or less. Prices are fair because Article cuts out the middleman and sells directly to you. No showrooms, no salespeople, no retail markups. You save up to 30% over traditional retail prices or, again, to beat the drum, 100% if you're Will Arnett. Article is offering our listeners $50 off their first purchase of $100 or more. To claim, visit article.com slash smartless, and the discount will be automatically applied at checkout. That's article.com slash smartless to get $50 off your first purchase of $100 or more. Thanks, Article, from Will Arnett. Smartless gets support from Keeps, y'all. Want to stay ahead of hair loss? Do it with Keeps. Two out of three men will experience some form of hair loss by the time they're 35. Now listen to this. There are only two FDA-approved medications that can prevent hair loss. And guess what? Keeps offers both. Keeps offers a simple, stress-free way to keep your hair. You'll get convenient virtual doctor consultations and medications delivered straight to your door every three months. You don't have to leave your home. Get 24-7 care and support. Keeps has a network of expert medical advisors, prescribers, and care specialists to support you in making your hair goals a reality. Treatments start at just $10 per month, and Keeps offers generic versions of the two FDA-approved medications to prevent hair loss. And treatment plans are affordable, typically half the cost of pharmacy prices. Keeps has everything your hair needs, delivered straight to your door with discreet packaging and proven results. Remember, prevention is key. Treatments can take four to six months to see results, so act fast. When it comes to your hair, save more, spend less. Hold on, almost done. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, which I know you are, go to K-E-E-P-S dot com slash smartless to receive your first month of treatment for free. I'm going to tell it to you again. That's K E. E-P-S dot com slash smartless to get your first month free. One more time, dum-dum. K-E-E-P-S dot com slash smartless. Hey, Smartless listener, this episode is brought to you by Zelle. Now listen, Zelle is a great way to send money to family and friends no matter where they bank in the U.S. Here's an example of how we pay each other with Zelle. So, Sean just had a birthday. Will and I didn't have a gift for him. Sean loves this restaurant called Koi, right? And it's that's the fish, not what he acts when he doesn't want to tell you something. So, Will and I, uh, we're going to take him to dinner for his birthday. But then we're going to slap on a very early April Fool's joke and make him pay us back, and we're going to make him use Zell. 
Oh, now you know what? I'm just a goof, and so is Will, and so is Sean, and so are you if you're listening. Are you having fun? We're just playing a little audio grab ass. Now keep driving, y'all. Look for Zelle in your banking app today. And now back to the show. Did you learn most of what you use today as an actor from watching your dad, or did or did you did you study uh, strictly? You know, like I studied a little bit at Berghoff in New York, yeah. uh, but I didn't really learn much there. It's mainly on the job training, right. you know. I mean, just and then and Bo, you know, Bo. I, I don't know. This is a story I've told before. Maybe you guys haven't heard it. I'll tell it again if you like. Yeah, please. Yeah, you know, one of the tough things as an actor is like, you know, wh- where am I going to get an audience to practice my stuff, you know? Yeah. So Bo, he's about, I don't know, in his early 20s, I'm about, you know, 15, 16 years old. And... Uh, How, Jeff, I got to tell you, you look terrible. <laughs> <laughs> For 15? <laughs> this For 15? Is, uh, yeah. yeah. 15 years. Oh, yeah, this, oh. We're going to have to side <laughs> yeah, text well, you after this interview. Yeah, I didn't sleep well last night. <laughs> <laughs> so Bo rented a flatbed truck and we would get some scenes together. We were working on some, uh, you know, Holden Caulfield, you know, what, uh, Catcher in the Rye scenes, you know, and yeah. other scenes. And he he worked it because we were trying, trying to get me an agent and so forth. Right. We'd get this flatbed truck and we'd pull into a supermarket. And our father <laughs> taught us how to do stage fighting. And so we would stage a fake fight. Up in the flatbed? <laughs> no, no, I, I in the parking lot, you know. Uh-huh. And mm-hmm. we'd get, you know, we'd, but we'd get our, you know, we'd act the shit out of it. Right. And the, the crowd would come around and we'd say, no, it's a show. And we'd jump <laughs> up on the back of the flatbed and we'd do our scenes <laughs> until the cops came. And then we would try to improv the cops into our scene, which really oh pissed them God. off. No way. And then we say, okay, we're going, we're going. And we'd get in the truck and go to the next supermarket. Traveling and we'd play show. the supermarket circuit, man. <laughs> That's hysterical. But That's wait, so, great. so that, that was all in and around Los Angeles? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and what made you want to go, you know, to the farm life in Montana? Well, um, I did the movie up here with uh, Clint Eastwood uh, called Thunderbolt and Lightfoot. Sure, huh? And I fell in love with Montana. Yeah, you know. got yeah. Mike got me a Harley Davidson. You know, rolled around yeah. and that. Because it's the I opposite. Was... It's the absolute polar opposite of. Montana. Have you been? Have you guys been to Montana at all? I have. Yeah, I don't mm. think I have. No, but I, I hear it's. Oh, gorgeous. it's sweet, man! It is sweet. Yeah. And uh, and then I made a movie called the Rancho Deluxe up here, and that's where I met my wife. Mm-hmm. And then I, and that's yeah. And then, what was uh, she doing on the film? She was. Uh, <laughs> they used to do brain surgery in this old place. It's like a big. It's a hot spring and stuff called Chico, Chico Hot Spring. And she was working her way through college as a waitress or a maid. I don't know. She did all mm-hmm. kinds of stuff. Mm-hmm. And I'm sitting in there, we're in the hot spring doing a scene with Sam Waterston and Harry Dean Stanton, right? <laughs> and Richard Bright, you know, we're just looking there and, we're, and I can't take my eyes off this gorgeous girl, man. She's got two black eyes and a broken nose and she's what? just gorgeous. I cannot <laughs> take my eyes off her. And so I finally get the, you know, the guest to ask her out. She says, no. No. Uh-huh. <laughs> I say, no? She goes, no, maybe small town, maybe I'll see you around. And I said, oh, okay. And her prophecy proved true. And I think it was at the rap party. I saw her and uh, we danced. And, you know, that was, you know, that was all through growth. Now, this is, again, a story I've told many times. If you guys have heard it, try to act like you haven't heard no, it. No, please. We out. love it. We'll love do some this. advanced pretending. So yeah. now <laughs> we, we go, yeah, so now we cut. 30 years later, we're married. We've got all these kids. And I'm at my desk opening my mail, and I opened this letter from uh, the makeup man on that show, Rancho Deluxe. And he says, I'm going through my files and I found something that might interest you. You, uh, it was two shots, two photographs of a local girl that you were asking out. So I have a photograph of the first words that I've ever spoke 
to my wife. Oh, wow. Um, wow. Saying, would you go out with me? And she said, no. And wow. click, I have that picture. <laughs> now, did he great. know? Did he know he was sending it to you? No, that, he had you, no and, and idea. It was married? my wife. No, oh, no, he had no God. idea. What a valuable thing. Oh, man. Yeah, that's my prized possession. That's whenever, cool. whenever I think we're not meant for each other, any of that. Shit. How long have you guys been married now? Going on 45. Wow. <laughs> How many wow, kids? You said you got a bunch Three of kids? Three kids. Right? Got, yeah. Uh, How old are they now? Uh, oh, they're like, you know, 40, 36, yeah. 34. You got any grandkids like out of them yet? Got I got um, three grandkids. Mm. Uh, Bennett. Yeah, uh, Barbara Co went to school with my middle girl Jesse. She just oh, no had way. a, a no yeah, way. She just had a a little baby, Leon, and wow. uh, I've got wow. Gracie and Ben. Do you do you? I, I would imagine I'm going to be a real goofy granddad. I'm going to be very excited to watch. Oh, you think you're going to be less grouchy than you are now? <laughs> Definitely. How many yeah, kids yeah. you got, <laughs> uh, Jeff? I have two daughters, 15 and 10. Um, and, uh, they're, uh, they're little angels. Oh, man, um, two daughters. That's, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I got three girls. You got, did any of your kids go into the business? You know, unlike my dad and my mom, who really encouraged me to go into it all. Yeah. I didn't do that. You know, I really dragged my feet about going into it, you know. Yeah. I had so many other things to do that I wanted to do, and I resisted. You know, but that's kind of my MO in life. I resist, resist until I can't do that anymore and get sucked in. But, um, <laughs> you know, I didn't uh, give it to my kids like that. You know, I didn't present it to them early enough. But they've cued me, you know, and I can say, oh, you got this. You could right. do this, you know. And they say, no, I don't want to do it. Did that. you dissuade them at all from it? Because I know I do that with no, my girls. No, 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 I didn't. No, I wanted them to come from them, you know, because yeah. my parents, like I said, I was carried on at six months old. I mean, uh -huh. they were shoving it down Pinched my throat, man. You know, who it, yeah. wants to do what their parents want you to do? Oh, man? Right, yeah. I, I didn't want to do it. I had other things to do. Yeah, I I'm kind of the same. I have like I have three boys, and, and my my middle son, he's he's a really funny kid. And uh, but both his parents, his my ex wife and and I are, you know, he we're both in sort of comedic actors or comedians or whatever. And so we're like we're hesitant to actually like push him into it. But at the same time, we kind of want to just leave it open to him. And if that's what he wants to do, we're not actively dissuading right. him. Oh, putting yeah. that and way. then there's the whole thing about competing with your dad or your brother. Yeah, you know, I didn't yeah. want to get into that thing. Either. No, yeah. exactly. That well that's weird, right? I mean, Jeff, I mean, think about it. Like, yeah, your your dad, Lloyd, was a, a uh, an actor for ever. Huge and star. Your, and huge star. And your brother too, man. I mean, that's that's an intense dynamic. It could yeah, be yeah. anyway. The competition yeah. there, or or lack of it, was it was it? I know I dealt with that with my sister as well, and we were always just very kind of open and upfront about. We took it as a positive, like, well, you know, listen, we're we're, we're we've got extra things to talk about now at the dinner table, you know, like that's oh, right. that, that that that's all. Um, it was was it was it ever an issue with with you guys? I would imagine. No, not. it was really you know if you know it's like being on the same team basically, yeah. and like you say, there's so much in common, so much great stuff that you can talk about you know that's yeah. not uh, yeah. it's not always like that in families yeah but um i just didn't want to you know when we did baker boys that was no competition that was like just a gas man yeah. it was fun yeah. and working with my dad so i don't know you know so much about what we worry about <laughs> does it's fantasy it doesn't happen you know yeah. Yeah. I'm such a believer in that too. All all the worst things that ever happened to me never happened. Yeah, what's that? <laughs> that's that quote. Uh, you know, what's his name? Samuel Clemens. You know, what's his? You know, is that what he said? said? You know, who's the guy? You know, I can't. I, this is something. I don't know if it's COVID or old age, but my memory, man. Yeah, no, you it's guys, me too. Uh, yeah. Do you uh, guys have too. had COVID or no? No, you had, had a really it, bad yeah. case of it, didn't you? But even but even before that, I I reached I reached for something in my head and it's just not there. Yeah. And then you try yeah. to it's like trying to remember a dream, and the more you try to remember it, the further it slips away. And so now I just say fuck it. I just yeah. it'll come back to me who, in five or ten minutes. Who, forget who it. wrote Tom Sawyer? You know, Mark Twain. Yeah. Yeah. Mark <laughs> Twain. Samuel <laughs> Clemens. Thank you, man. Yeah. <laughs> Mark Twain said, said something about that. You're what you were saying, well, you know, we worry about all this stuff. Yeah, all this shit. And it's it's all just so painful, and it's all not, it's unneeded. Jeff, I'm glad we're talking about this now, because just to get real for a second, I, I've been going through a thing 
lately, and I don't know if it's because of the world around us or, or what, and I've been kind of, like, bummed out. And I'm, a, by nature, these guys will attest to it, by nature, I'm a very optimistic person. Joyful. And yeah. Joyful. And I wake up every day, our, our, our dear friend Robert Downey said uh, a few times in the last couple of years, nobody wakes up in the morning happier to be themselves than, than you, he said to me. <laughs> and it's true. I'm very happy it's and true, joyful. Yeah. Yeah, and I've been kind of bummed out, man. And I'm like, is it because I'm getting... Well, I'm asking my Uncle Jeff now. Is it because I'm getting yeah. older? Am I going through? I don't know what's going on, but why am I? I have a sense of ennui right now. Yeah, but look at Jeff. Mm. Jeff's the most joyful guy we've had on the show. I ever. know, but he, maybe he's gone oh, through phases, I, man. Oh, I go through phases, man. The, the emotional weather shit. Now, I wake up in the morning. I, my mornings are terrible. So oh, challenging, really? man. Oh, I wake up, I go, oh, another day. Really? <laughs> I got to do it all over again. Okay. I got to do this. I do these little exercises that literally take only five minutes. You guys might want to check it out, especially if you got any back problems. Yeah. yeah. Called foundation training. And it's about two, three minutes, but it's painful and it's torturous. Yeah. And I say, I got to do that. I go, hey. Anyway, I got to have a cup of cups of coffee, and then I'm feeling good. Right. But, you know, I think, well, it's the weather, right? Yeah. And then also uh, these obstacles, you know, the difficulty, the challenges of where we are now. Yeah. Uh, those are all um, opportunities to us to figure it out. Yeah, yeah, and also opportunities for us to kind of, you know, gnash our teeth a little bit like the older you get i think the more uh, the more you become aware of things that are just not great you know you be, just become smarter your your radar becomes more acute yeah. and you can notice more things that could be better you know yeah and the thing that you know your your guys generation what is it now i uh, uh, i mean I, when i first heard this word i said are you kidding me the you know the great career now is I want to be an influencer. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's that's and, not us. Uh, I, and <laughs> damn it, I want to be an influencer. I think that's, you know, and I guess we all are, you know. Yeah. And yeah. In one sense, I talked about this thing that Bucky Fuller, you know, the geodesic dome guy turned me on to trim tabbing. You know, he made this observation with the big ocean-going tankers, the challenge the engineers must have had with this, to make a rudder big enough to turn this ship, and it took too too much energy to make that rudder turn to turn the ship. So they came up with a simple, brilliant plan of putting a little rudder on the big rudder. Yeah. So wow. the little rudder turns the big rudder, and the big rudder turns the ship. And Bucky said, this is a perfect uh, metaphor for how all of us individuals uh, are connected to society and our culture. We're all trim tabs. You guys, what you're doing here on the show, you know, right. this is all a trim tab, and we're influencing. We're saying, hey, guys, what about this? Check so this am out. So am I the big rudder or the small rudder? I love that. You're yeah. the small, you're the big rudder, and I'm turning you, Sean. I'm turning you. So listen, um, I, I, I will say... You've been influencing all, us and a lot of folks for a long time with all these great, great roles and and I, I as will was saying earlier i love the way that you have bounced between back and forth between leading man and character actor just yeah. so effortlessly um for so long no one can do that you tell me one leading man that can you know bite off a big spicy chewy character and not look like he's chewing up the scenery you know, you mm. just, you got real chops, Jeff, and you always have. Thank you. And, I mean, well, you know, a lot of that, that came from my dad because I saw how much he struggled doing Sea Hunt. Mm. He, you know, got that character so down that people thought he was a skin diver. Mm. Right. You know, and they sent him a bunch of skin diving scripts, you know. And yeah. he's a, you know, Shakespearean trained actor. You know, he, he replaced... Uh, Let's go see. Here's a name I just forgot. Man of La Mancha. Mark know, Twain. Uh, uh, <laughs> Anthony Quinn. Who, who did the? Who was the famous? You know, I am a Don Quixote. Is that man. is that Anthony Quinn? Name. Who was that? No, no. no it's, but but on Broadway, you know, he used and he replaced him. And I remember doing a a movie, uh, Blown Away, a movie I did with him. 
Sure. And I said to the producer, hey, I got a guy, I got a guy who could uh, play my uncle. He kind of looks like me. He's a good actor. And he said, guy said, who? I said, Lloyd Bridges. And he laughed. And I said, why are you laughing? He says, well, your dad is a good actor, but he's more of a comedian, really. Huh. I said, what are you talking about? And it's because my dad did Airplane. Oh, that's yeah. right. Wow. Air, yeah. Which that, and, so, and so he was labeled for a while as a, you know, he just does comedy. You that's know? right. So I went out of my way to mix it up, you yeah. know, and, and mm -hmm. do 180s as many times as I could. Earlier, I think that's really day. smart, man. I got a lot of. I, I did early on. People came to know me because of Arrested Development. I think that people thought like, and I played a lot of characters who were. People used to say, "Oh, you play a lot of assholes," and I said, "No, I don't play assholes. I play characters that are like that have a lot of issues and that are <laughs> unhinged, but they're not. I never see them as assholes. I always just see them as." Uh, you know, not connected to reality in some way, or they've got something going on. And like this character we did on Arrested, he was like, he had, his dad didn't love him, his mom didn't love him either. Uh, and then, you know, whatever. But I but I think that you get into that as an actor, I, f I feel like the, for a lot of time, people are like, oh, you just kind of do this thing. And you're like, yeah, nah, it's not really... Since when? Like, who gets to decide that I, that that's what I do now? You yeah. know what I, I, mean? I love it when I love it when uh, comedians uh, play bad guys. Like, you yeah. know, remember Robin the, when he did those two or three movies back sure. to back where he played the yeah. bad one guy. hour photo and yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then Albert Brooks played yeah. a bad guy. You guys have guy. dark sides too that you can tap into. Mm. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, Sean, yeah. show him. Take your hat off, Sean. Yeah. Show him. Show, show him your dark side. I got you crazy see. hair yeah. that's gonna like a murderer's <laughs> hair. <laughs> Um, wait, Jeff, are you still doing music? Do you still play? Do you still sing? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know what I'm doing now is kind of fun. I'm going back into what I call my music mind and looking at, you know, a bunch of stuff that I kind of didn't, you know, have too much faith in. I'm bringing those things out and I say, oh, I dig this. This is pretty good. Mm -hmm. I'm jamming with my buddy T Bone Burnett you know, yeah, to, me, to mentor cool me a bit and say, you know, what do you think about all this stuff? Shall I just make these little albums for myself? Because what's you know, I don't know what I, you know, I don't know, uh, I don't know what to do with it, but I'm having fun with it. I That's love cool. music. You know? I like his great. wife too. What a, what oh, a neat Callie, couple they so are, great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, really, really cool. Uh, if you could go back in time and and see one concert from a band that's either no longer together or artists that are no longer with us, what would it be? I know mine would be Led Zeppelin. Oh, wow. Yeah, I uh, I was thinking of the Beatles. You know, you see mm -hmm. Ronnie Howard's, uh, that movie, and they played that last Shea Stadium thing with a good sound. Yeah. yeah. You know, that yeah. concert would have been great, but I bet the sound was so bad that it wouldn't yeah. be that great. Right. But do you remember a thing called Rock and Roll Circus? Do you ever see no. that? Uh -uh. No. No. Check that out. Google that. Rock and Roll Circus. That's a concert it's movie? something that the Rolling Stones, uh, oh. they uh, hosted. And it's just, you know, I think The Who is on there. I think oh, wow. John Lennon mm. formed a band for it. It's a pretty wild little. Like an early music festival? It's an early music festival. Oh, yeah, okay. but it was, like a, every, it was like a circus vibe. All in a, a soundstage, I think. Yeah. It was something like that. Wow. Sean, what would you go see? From... That's not no longer with us. Yeah, maybe yeah, like yeah. maybe like the first. Oh, this, oh, that's what you said. That's no longer with us. Well, yeah, like or just could be no longer with us or a band that's now defunct. Yeah. Oh, well, I just got to say Ronnie Hawkins because Ronnie just bit the Ronnie dust Hawkins. recently. Mm -hmm. Ronnie yeah. Hawkins. And yeah. I don't know if you guys know him, but he was yeah. quite an amazing cat. I would I would like to go see one of his early shows with uh, the Hawks, who were. You know, then we're, they became the band. I was, you know what, I, Jeff? I was going to say, I wish I could go and see that last waltz concert. That's what oh, I would have liked to see. That would have been see. a goodie. Yeah. yeah. I probably would have checked out the Carpenters. Is anybody still listening? Oh, yeah. Oh, you, sorry I interrupted you, Sean. <laughs> hey, yeah, Sean? The Carpenters, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah. She had a beautiful voice, didn't she? <laughs> Yes. Are you being facetious? Or are you I'm really being sick? both. I'm being you're both. Be, you're being both. See, yes. that's that's real brilliance, man. Because because I was a huge fan. I was a massive fan. Oh, but but, he's, but you're also being a little bit cheeky. No, no. But I I Wait, I you never were a really big fan of the Carpenters. Dude, I used to listen to them all the time. Oh, and Simon and Garfunkel. Voice. I would have listened to Simon and Garfunkel. All right. That I I'd love yeah. to see that that uh, that concert they did at Central Park. That would be fun to go. 
One of my favorite concerts I went to was a double bill with Paul Simon and Bob Dylan. Oh, man. Oh, Jesus. Wow. And Paul Simon comes out. They, they kept, you know, who op- they switched who would open for the other guy. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Paul Simon comes out, and he opens with something like America, you know, that, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, and he's got two drummers, violins, horn section, you know. And I said, how is Bob going to follow this, yeah. man? And Bob comes out, he's got, you know, a bass, a drum, a piano, and a guitar, you know. Yeah. And what does he open with? Hello, darkness, my old friend. All right. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, and again, Sean, you don't know if his tongue's in his cheek or not, man. Right. It's just right. perfect. Right, you know? right, right. right. That, hello, darkness. That's that's my song, man. Well, you that got a Bob Dylan. Song. You got a Bob Dylan T-shirt on, don't you? Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, I'm a total fan, man. Oh, wow. I got to work with him in another weird movie that he wrote with Larry Charles. Do you know who Larry Charles yeah, is? Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah, what was what the movie? So it? It's called uh, Masked and Anonymous. What? When Check it I- out, oh. man. Look, and look who's in it. Look who's in the thing, the cast that he's in. But it Check was it Larry out. Charles and Bob Dylan wrote this over about three years. Dylan's the star of it, and Larry was his first thing he directed, man. Wow. Wow. And it is a trip. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, got to see that. What wow. a cast. Um, my, the, the, the albums I had on rotation when I was a kid were, I wrote them down, The Carpenters, The Eagles, The Cosby, uh, you know, stand-up. Comedy album? Album. Comedy record, yeah. George Carlin's comedy album. Yeah. yeah. And, then, and Simon and Garfunkel. And, and, the and Erasure Unplugged. Well, you raise your everything. I know every word to every song. <laughs> oh, sorry, fully plugged. You raise your fully plugged. How about Nichols and May? Did you get what? into them? You Nichols guys? and May. Nichols and May, of yeah. course. Yeah. Oh, the doctor stuff. What was it? Uh, a little more gauze. You know, Dude, right. I, I once, I once in the '90s went and saw in New York. I saw within uh, six days of each other. I saw Dylan at the supper club. They were shooting something, and there was like 250 people there. And somehow, I forget how I got in, but I got to see. And then six days later, I saw the uh, Jerry Garcia band. And I saw them, <gasps> within six days, I saw them both play Forever Young, which was oh, really man. cool. Dylan oh, yeah. and Jerry Garcia. And yeah, yeah. Yeah, and they played together for a while, too. You know, yeah, man. They was, was, <sighs> we'll be right back. Hey, listener. Our support partner is named Athletic Greens. Now, I take AG1 by Athletic Greens literally every day. Good God, if you could see, if you could see my body. I gave AG1 a try eh, X years ago because, well, I wanted better gut health. I wanted more energy. I, I wanted an optimized immune system. I hated taking pills, vitamins, supplements. I wanted a supplement that actually tastes great. This is the best option for easy, optimal nutrition out there. You take one scoop of AG1, you're absorbing like 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. Now, are you going to go to the market and get all that stuff yourself? No. AG1 puts it all together for you. This blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, your recovery, your focus, and your aging. Now, listen, I've got a Zoom coming up, and I'm going to go make myself a nice big tall smoothie in a see-through flask so that everybody on this Zoom can see this beautiful green stuff I'm eating. Guess what? It's a good conversation starter. This company, they're, they're making me healthy, but they're also helping my Zoom calls get a little Zoomier. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your body with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop of AG1 and a cup of water every day. You don't need a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. So go to athleticgreens.com slash smartlist to give AG1 a try. That's athleticgreens.com slash smartless. Check it out. And back to the show. Jeff, I want to ask you before we're done, I want, I want, I want to give you enough time to talk about the Coen brothers if you, if you can. Yeah, well, I was going to get yeah. to it. We, I want to talk about the Big Lebowski. This is a whole subject unto and itself. And True Grit, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jesus. 
But let's start. Can we start with uh, Big Lebowski, man? How that came to uh, you into your orbit and what that was like? Yeah, I can't remember exactly when, but uh, I ran into the Cohen brothers, I think, at a party or something, and they said, yeah, we're writing something for you, man. I said, oh, oh my great. Because I had seen Blood Simple, and I was, yeah. you know, thought they were terrific. And then I got the script, and I said, what? This is like, uh, <laughs> you, know, so, you know, a high school version of me that, you know, <laughs> It's you know, Spicoli. What you know, were we, you know? What you know? Are you guys spying on me or something? Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, so <laughs> that's how that happened. And well, uh, how did they? But 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 how did they? Why did they, so they wrote it specifically for you? And that character like that. What was their answer to that? Why did I'm sure you had said that? Why did you think of me for this part? What what had they seen? What did they thought? I don't know, man. And I said, "You sure?" You know, I'm. I. I. I can't, I have a kind of a history of trying to get out of parts. You know, like yeah, I remember right. with Terry Gilliam. I said, do you, "Why do you want me for this?" I don't feel like this guy. I remember, you know, I'd pitch my other acting friends. You know, uh-huh. I said, what about this guy? You know, and I probably did the same thing with those guys. Uh-huh. Uh, I can't remember when I played just before it, but it was nothing like I had never played a part like that. You know? Yeah. But do you remember, do you have a recollection, though, Jeff, of doing that movie? Like, when, when you're like, when it's like you and, and uh, John Goodman and Turturro and, and Steve Buscemi, and you're doing those scenes, and you guys are all taking, you guys are all taking big swings with these, with these characters. Were you, guys, were you guys going like, hey, man, are we out on a limb over here, yeah. or are we, we good? Had such, we had such a good Time, man. Yeah. And you know, when that movie came out, it wasn't, and it didn't do well here. No, it had this hit Europe first, and then it came splashing back and really kind of well after the fact. But nobody really got it, you know. Right. I auditioned for them for um, Intolerable Cruelty. Remember that? Ooh, and I yeah. went in and, and met with them, and they were just really cool. Like, I, I, in the twenty minutes that I got to meet with them, and they asked me, like, "Hey, do you get do you get stoned at all? Do you smoke pot?" <laughs> And I was like, um, like a little, a little at the time. And they're like, okay, okay. Good to know. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. And I was like, oh, oh was that like the, was I supposed to say like all the time and then we could hang out? Oh, well, they probably no, wanted you yeah. to score some of the weed for them. Maybe yeah, that's yeah. what it was. Why don't you just there? Yeah. 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 Here's a you... weird thing. But I didn't, I was a pothead before I got sick. Oh, I can't smoke it. But I'm, you know, I consider myself a pothead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I, I, and I'm kind of surprised that I didn't smoke one joint during that whole film. Man. Oh wow! No way! <laughs> wow! No way! Yeah, no. I figured. No, I read those lines, you know, and that good writing. It seems like improvisation, you know, but yeah. it's not. That's every man, every fuck. It was just yeah. well placed. You didn't want to mess with that music, you know. I wonder how cl- it's such a specific character, such a great version of that of that writing that you performed, I wonder how close it was to the idea they had for the dude. I wonder. I, well, they had a guy, you know, they had uh, uh, Jeff Dowd was a guy that they kind of modeled the character after. And I Brother of Anne? Uh, uh, no, I don't yeah. think so. It's a big world, Jason. Jesus Sorry. Christ. <laughs> <laughs> fucking seven billion people on the planet. Get wise, <laughs> motherfucker. Hey, you know you know what, Jeff? You know what's funny? Um, we had Sean Penn on the show last year at some point, and he talked about how... He's he did, good, isn't he? He's, he's, I love him. Yeah, he's a good him. actor. He can do all this kind of... He's amazing. Thing. But he's he like you. Really he's like you, he man. Like he mixes... Yeah. He mix, he's just like you. You guys are cut from the same cloth, man. And, and, and he was talking about doing Spicoli, his character from Fast Times. Oh, and then, yeah. And then recently running into the guy that he always had in mind who he based it on, and the guy was with his kids and stuff, so he didn't say anything to the guy. He saw him, like, on the path to, to go surfing in Malibu. <laughs> and the dude was like, hey, man. And he was like, oh, hey. And he's like, oh, this is the guy I modeled this burnout character on. <laughs> and now he's with his wife and kids, so he's like, I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> you ever see... Uh... This must be the place, a movie that he was in, oh. that based on the David Byrne song, you know, the Talking Heads. Tune. Yeah, of course. And David's yeah. in the movie too, but that's another good one, man. And yeah, he plays a, a kind of a burnout, you know, glam rocker or something. Oh yeah, no, great. we have we had David on the on the podcast recently, actually. Yeah. He was, oh he was great. man, he the was Talking really cool. Heads. Now when yeah. they came out, man, oh. yeah, they replaced the Beatles for me. 
Oh, really? Wow. And I remember I ran into <laughs> David at some bar or something in New York, and I was I just, you know, I had a few drinks on it. Yeah. To, I just gush. I said, David, you <laughs> music, man. Uh -huh. I mean, it's so incredible, you know, and he's just. <laughs> I said, no, man, I mean, like the Beatles. You're better than the Beatles, man. <laughs> and he just stood there. <laughs> and he just, he there was react. no answer. And I finally just had to. Walk away. Walk away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. By the way, away. I do that. I, I'm very passionate about music, too, and I, I do that a lot, too, musicians. I corner them all the time. and like. Yeah. What about his shows? What about that American Utopia? Yeah, yeah. here, that's incredible. I saw that live. That's oh, incredible. Yeah. And the movie's great, too. And I, and I also saw the Stop Making Sense tour at the Greek oh, Theater. Wow. Right? You know, oh, the really? Greek, too, the Greek yeah, you've seen that spot. movie? Well, of course, yeah. And they shot uh, that here on a stage, that movie. Jonathan right? Demi, man. Jonathan yeah. Demi. shot that. Yeah, God, yeah. he knows where to put it. I feel like you worked with Jonathan Demi, didn't you? No, yes. I would no. love to have, but no. But he was mm. wonderful. God, That's amazing. I want to know. So, so the place where you're at right now is a farm. Is it actually a farm? So we call it a ranch. A ranch. A, a ranch. ranch. Yes. <laughs> and um, do you actually do work around there? Do you have the like, animals? We had, or? you know, we had a bunch of you know cattle and horses and all stuff. We don't need more. Yeah. Shot them. You just shot them we all. Shot them, buried them. <laughs> yeah. <now>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a slow Sunday. It's like, honey. Yeah. Yeah, We're gonna yeah. do something fun. Let's see how many cows? You know, something I ask uh, people that uh, have had uh, a ton of set experiences. You have. Um, have you ever been drawn to uh, direct to to use oh, all that you have absorbed and and put it all in that in that role? That character. Uh, yeah, a little bit, because I've been digging your direction in Ozark, man. I no. think, God, Thank that you, must be Thank fun, you. man. Oh, Thank God. You so he, he writes it, directs it, acts so brilliantly. Huh? But you're very nice. But you're, you're, no. you're, 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 the stuff you have absorbed and from the directors that you've worked yeah, with. Yeah, but and you, the know, actors, you know, and I've had, gr I've had great luck with first time directors, you know, yeah. really mm -hmm. incredible. Like, I'm thinking of Baker Boys. Steve yeah. Clovis, you know, he must oh, have been sure. 24 when writer, he wrote yeah. and directed that yeah. thing. No way. And wow. uh, I've had just great, great experiences with these guys. And, you know, as an actor, you know, you if you create this loosey-goosey, you know, joyous feeling, you're yeah. all given ideas. And so I get a lot of my wanting to direct out and just, you know, being on the team and saying, hey, what about this? You know, right. what about that? That kind right. of thing. Yeah, right. I think that you say you've had a lot of luck with like first time directors and stuff, but I, I, I bet you, Jeff, you, I've, I bet you spent your life making your own luck, and I bet you're coming with a good attitude, and I bet you that is fostered. Uh, you know, I, I bet you all of those first time directors are lucky to yeah. have had you making their be stuff the work. guy in their movie. Yeah. Fuck yeah. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. But the, those first time, I mean, look at Orson Welles. We haven't done much better than Citizen Kane, man. Right. And it was all that stuff that he didn't know what he couldn't do. He just said, let's jam, you know. Sure. And, and who's the famous DP, Tol Greg Tolan, you know. Yeah. He was the old master. And uh, there was a story that Peter Bagdanovich, who was a real, you know, scholar sure. with, with movies, he, he told me a story because he was tight with Orson Welles. And, you know, Orson said, you know, I can't really get, uh, you know, the uh, stage direction, you know, that thing. And. Tolan said, oh, just come over on the weekend and we'll, you know, no. Don't you love it with the masters when they don't put any kind of pretense and they're just, I'm one of you guys, you know, yeah. I love yeah. that. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and uh, Tolan, you know, said, you know, you're the guy, I want to do what you do your vision. You know, how old was he when he made that? Was he 24 in his yeah, 20s, I think? I think. Wow. Something like that. And uh, so Wells is in there, and he's, and it was in the days when everybody wore suits and ties and shit, you know, to work. And he said, now, with the lighting, I want it to come like this, you know, to the gaffer and stuff. And the gaffer goes up to, says, Mr. Wells, you know, that's Mr., really Mr. Tolan's job. And Greg Tolan overheard that, and he just made a big speech to the whole cast and crew. This is your director, you know, do what he says. He has a vision, you know. Do whatever you want, Ors. You know. Wow. Yeah. Gosh, what a movie that is. Huh? What a great yeah. movie. And I think th I think that what you were kind of saying, like that idea that you have to have. I remember once some a guy telling me a long time ago, an acting teacher years ago, like 
art is ultimately absent of ego. Like you have to be totally willing and be totally open. If you want to do something great and create something great, you got to get over your own, whatever your shit is and let all that go and be open to the process, right? Yeah. yeah. This, is, this is one of the craziest things. I'm a huge sci-fi fan and my husband, Scotty, is to, but you're not going to believe this, one of my favorite movies of all time is Tron and he's yeah. wearing your shirt right now. <laughs> ah, Flynn! That's your character. Very that's, good. That's you. All what right, are the odds? Man, man Tron. <laughs> right. What a big that's deal so that cool. was when it came out. Um, with with all the, the, the all, again, all the years that you've been doing this, has the audience that you have been acting for internally, has that changed? Are you conscious of who you're doing your performance for? Because, like, sometimes for, and you, you guys, Will and Sean, you should answer this too, like, do you guys act for the cameraman? Do you act for the director? Do you act for the mm -hmm. other actor that you're in the scene with? Do you act for the people that are eventually going to see this? Do you act for yourself when you're eventually going to watch it? Are you are you even aware of of that? It's interesting. Yeah, I, th I mean, I think it's for myself and the director, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, if he's, you know, I don't, I always like to really, you know. Interesting question. Uh, very rarely when I don't, uh, you know, oh, Put the you know I like to empower the director to have power over me you know you I mean? do I mean, like I've that got, I like I like that and you know, unless I'm getting you know some messages from the big director uh -huh. up in the sky I try to you know do what the director you know because he can take me away from myself and my own yeah so you know. you'll let the director uh, uh, push you and pull you into places that maybe you weren't even planning on going in the scene yeah. and you're just putting trust in the editing room they're going to weed out all the crap that sucks and only well, put that's, in the stuff that's you know, good the editing that's the thing you know one of my favorite directors to work with Bo did his first movie I did his last movie was Hal Ashby oh yeah. my god who was an, came from editing you know yeah. it's interesting where the directors come from you know mm -hmm. yeah and editing man I mean god yeah. well you must edit mm -hmm. You, you, yeah, I would love that I mean, part that, of it. Yeah, that because so I'd like to give the director, you know, it's like photography. I like to bracket my performances. You know, do too much. You know, one in the pocket, what I'm thinking, what right. he's thinking, and then do something. You know, on either side, only for the know? front row. Yeah, because uh, you know, in the editing, you don't know what you're going to need because you always shoot out of sequence. You know? Right, but you—that's putting a lot of trust in the editor and the director to make sure but, they yeah, don't. Yeah, but you got to do that, don't you think, man? Yeah. If you if you're holding back, man, I mean, shit. Yeah, I just thought of a fun director story. You might get yeah. a kick out of that. So Coppola and Tucker. Yeah, our second. Week, we our first week was just kind of getting to know each other, mm -hmm. and the second week he gets the cast and crew together, and he says, "All right, now this week we're going to shoot the whole movie on this little video camera, uh, Vittorio Storaro. He'll be using this little wheelchair. That'll be our dolly, and you costume people, you know, the, the look at those curtains. They would make good wedding dress, and uh, you actors hit know your lines as best you can because we're only going to do each scene one time." Wow. wow. And uh, we're going to do it in sequence. It was kind of like, you know, the Little Rascals, our gang. You know, let's make a movie. Come on. Right. You know? And he's shooting this whole thing. Now, what we didn't know is to and from work, he's editing all of this stuff. And at the end of that week, he gives us each a cassette of the movie. He says, now, we've already done the movie. Here's the movie. And now we're just going to polish it up. Whoa. And uh, and then as we did the movie, he replaced those wow. practice scenes with the real scenes. And even before that, he had a storyboard, and he shot the storyboard like the movie, like yeah. you know, two hours. Yeah. So the movie was always in existence. Isn't that wild? Yeah. So he got to do like a, a version of the movie, like the yeah. like the storyboard or previs with all the actors. Yeah. And, and for an actor, because you're always shooting out a sequence, yeah. to have that linear version of it that you could refer to. Yeah, that's really cool. It was really well, Do you think he was doing it to help you guys out, or do you, was it to no, help himself no, he, out? No, because he, if you remember that movie, it had all these low... Te it was quite uh, advanced with all its uh, technical, yeah. low-tech kind of stuff that he specialized in. Yeah. You know, like the Dracula movie with... Gary Oldman was so great that way, you know. Sure. All that. Oh, yeah. And he, so Francis is, while he's doing that, he's in the kid mode. You know, we're just playing around. Come on now, you know, do this. And it was, you know, relaxed and fun. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. 
Uh, yeah, it was a wild method. What a master he is. I think he's doing another movie right now. Is he? I think oh, so. Oh, God, yeah, I've yeah, lost yeah. touch with him. What do you have coming up, Jeff, that you're excited about? Well, <laughs> I've got this TV show called The Old Man, uh, yeah. FX Hulu thing. And uh, we we started it years ago, and then I got terribly sick, and yeah, I heard we about that. Uh, stopped for two years. Whoa! And then we went back and finished the thing. You went, yeah. you did go back and finish it. We went back and finished the season, and it was like we had a long weekend. <laughs> and I had this weird dream, man. You know, <laughs> hey, crazy. how are you? Listen, you seem, yeah. How are you feeling? How are you doing, man? You look great. I gotta I'm say, yeah, you sure do. Very good. I'm feeling great. Yeah. Uh, you know those tough times. You know it's like what you were saying, Will, about you know these tough times, man. Yeah. These tough times, they're opportunities to teach us things that we can't learn without them. You know. Yeah. And uh, and let's you know let's do some trim tab and let's influence <laughs> as much as we can to make a make a beautiful movie you know make you know work together to make the cool thing man yeah dude I love that I love that analogy too I like that idea that we're kind of like life is like you were saying like it's really cool what we get to do if you really think about it it's really cool what we get to do just to be alive and to have That's these lives right. Everybody, and this is the big yeah. all of us this is the yeah. big movie that we get yeah. to do for sure and, every day yeah making movies is such a great metaphor for how we can make this a beautiful world you know you get all these people they have all different political you know outlooks and they're have different personalities some are gloomy you know some actors only want to, you know, call me by my character. You know, right. it's all kinds of different versions. Yep. But everybody's trying to make a beautiful movie. You know, yes, right. it I love touches that. us. I love and that. That's what that's what the world ought to be doing. Right. Yeah. Somehow, yeah. you know, all work together. All these all these specialists. You know, all these masters. They get together to pull this magic trick off. One time magic trick. Yeah. Yeah. It's really so wild. I love yeah. it because I feel like, Jeff, that you're still in love with the magic of it, not so much the details or the tech, you know, all, all the technical. You you really, you live in, in the magic. That's where it is for you. And I, I get that sense from you, man, which I really love. Yeah. It's, it's the thing yeah. you can't explain or write down or and diagram. Out. But it's it that all. paradox thing, right, Sean? It's both, right, Sean? Yeah. It's yeah. like you're into the details and you're, eh, 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 and then you're into the magic. Eh, I mean, it's all going on at the same time, man. Yeah. It's a paradox, isn't it? You're always living in the present. Yeah. yeah, that's the gig, kind of. That's what I try to do. Yep. Yeah. So I will tell you this. One of the other things, so I, I, I kind of, we've taken up too much of your time, but I wanted to point out that, you know, I already pointed out that you and Jason started and you're both child actors. But you yeah. and Jason also have uh, had some voiceover experience in the, in the world. And there was a time, Jeff, for many years when the Hyundai Motor Company had a had a real solid oh, voice. Oh yes, and right. had a guy who had a lot of gravitas. Jason took that over, yeah. and then they decided that they wanted to do Can my ass. something no, light. They wanted to go why. light. I think. <laughs> And I wasn't here's, available. A little bit more economical, <laughs> a little bit more sensible. No, um, here's why it was, I think. Um, you were nominated for an Oscar, and Hyundai had bought a bunch of ad time during the Oscars, and so they couldn't have you being the oh, voice oh, of oh, one of oh, the oh, ads because oh, yes, it would that's... it would screw yeah. up the sort of unbiased, uh, whatever it was. So some sort of legal thing. So I had to do one of those uh, spots. You did? I think, I, oh, yeah, I, right, I think that's what right. it was. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I totally I'm, forgot about that. Yeah, Willie, that's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, well, anyway. listen, we're not, it's not professional grade, uh, nor is it sorry, not sorry. Uh, yeah. You know, Will's, Will's got some very big campaigns, Jeff. Well, I mean, you've, we don't got, a, you've got a wonderful voice. Well, no, I, I'm, not, I'm no Jeff Bridges, but I, I, you know what I no, mean? You've I'm, got I'm, a voice. You've got uh, some I'm getting, tone I'm getting, there. They're wonderful. I, I, I'm working on my oh, voice oh, oh, campaign. Oh, I put together, I put together your game a, a demo tape. Shit, somebody murdering a cat? What's going on? I feel like... Your voice, you remind me of a, you know, I'm thinking that this is kind of... Promoted a few of my weirder movies on, on this show, but another weird one, The Amateurs. And when you were doing that voice, Sean, it reminded me of 
Joey Pants. Do you know him? Oh, oh yeah. Of course. yeah. I love Joey yeah. Pants. Yeah. And uh-huh. he was playing a character called Some Idiot. And he was he had that voice. But <laughs> exactly another, and Ted Danson, you guys work with Ted? Any of you guys work with yes. Ted? I don't know if oh. I've worked with them, but I do I like he's him. Great. A lot. He was yeah. He's great. Awesome. He's great. He's wonderful. Good dude. He's nice. Yeah. Jeff, I'll say this, man. But I'm gonna let you. We're gonna let you go because you've been so generous with your time and kind. But I, I, you know, we're big fans. I think we speak for a lot of people. Always have been, man. And uh, really, really love your energy and really love yeah. what you do. And uh, kind of like your co-star uh, John Goodman, I've said this to the boys before. You're 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 in that same category for me of uh, as John Goodman. You guys have never never phoned it in, never turned in a bad performance ever. No matter ever. what the picture yeah, is, yeah. you guys are Thank always you, there, man. man. Thank yeah. you. And and it it's is true. such an honor and a treat. And I just think you're the best, Uncle Jeff. And uh, you give you. us all a it's good name, you, Uncle man. Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. man. Great hanging with you guys. You yeah. too, yeah. buddy. You too, Say man. hi to Bo, please. Yeah, yes, please I send will. our love to I Bo. Will. Father Bo. I will. Yeah. <laughs> All of our dad. <laughs> Lots of love, guys. All right, buddy. All right, you too. Man. See, see you, you later. Bye, see bye you, Jeff. Man. How do you know him, Will? Yeah, um, Will, how are you? What? What? Who? How do you? Uncle do Jeff. You, My yeah, buddy, what, Uncle Jeff. You don't yeah. know Jeff Bridges. Yes, what I the do, hell's man. going on? Because cool you? guys hang together, dude. No, I don't think when so. When you're cool, you, you hang with other cool people. So, like a chat Jeff room cool guys hang out in? It's or? for guys who are handsome with good voices. We're in a special. Oh. Club. Well, I haven't gotten an invitation. Jesus I'm Christ. still waiting I for my. I swear to God. I am is, looking at the mail every day. Is somebody driving a weasel? What's going on? <laughs> uh, yeah, what a that dude just makes me feel. He's good. the greatest. Yeah. So when we were so when Sean when when Sean and I were doing this show years ago, the Millers in in Bo was played my dad and on the show and um, I went to New York and I ran into Jeff. We were doing the Today Show and uh, he was like, "Hey man, I'm kind of like your uncle." And I was like, "All right." And then we had to do these photos backstage. He's like, "Let's just fuck around." And I was like. I love that he has that fuck around in him. You yeah, know I mean? he's just so easygoing. He's, yeah, he just want, he's just he really got a great positive vibe, and he wanted to. And uh, so we just started chatting, and I just immediately was, you know, and I've always been a massive fan. I meant it like I, I remember watching all of his movies, and he just yeah. has this effect. But I remember being in my early twenties and seeing in quick succession seeing Fisher King, which I thought that character was so interesting and. Mm-hmm. I think about that character more than I probably should. His character who was this big DJ and he gets offered a, a, a sitcom and he turns it down. Remember that thing? He was, he's kind of like a shock jock. Right. And he ends up, his life gets turned upside down by this by this insane Robin Williams character. Um, you know, so there's that. And then... And then he did that movie, uh, uh, Fearless. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I just remember you, you're talking about the crash scene, but there was, for me, it wasn't the crash scene. It was the, this idea you're seeing this metamorphosis again of a guy who has this event happen and he completely changes his outlook and he lets go. And I really, it really hit me. It was very profound to me. Uh, it really spoke to me, man. And I've just always, and then of course, Big Lebowski and everything, but there's, I've always felt connected to that dude. Yeah, he's just as got a fan. such as a good fan. energy, and it's he's been so s- consistent and genuine oh, and yeah, sincere. Yeah. It seems for yeah. years and years. Yeah, you hit it, um, uh, Will, when you said he. No matter what movie he's in, because we've all kind of been like, I don't know if this script is so great, or or this script is amazing, or whatever it is. He doesn't. It doesn't matter. He goes. He does it hundred percent all the time, every single role. Here's the other thing. Don't you guys think it's weird that Scotty had on? Jeff Bridges t-shirt? Not really. Not really. I'm Not pretty really, because it could have just been like one of like five things. It could have been Star Trek, Star Wars, <laughs> Tron. Uh, or you know just I, mean? I love Chin Chin. Or, sure. or I love Chin Chin. <laughs> chin Chin or Koi. But that's Koi. crazy that he had the t-shirt on. That from Tron, and we're talking to Jeff Bridges. Do you guys? Do you guys have a? Do you have a license plate a holder that says "Follow me to Koi"? Do you? <laughs> I'm not. I'm not flirting. I'm just being coy. <laughs> what, what's Listener, going on? Koi is a uh, fusion restaurant here on Restaurant well, Row. I, I, mean, I love. According I to love, Sean, Sean, what is it? It's a seafood, it's a seafood restaurant, restaurant, right? You got a lot of seafood there. No, no, no. Seafood. Long John Silver's is a seafood <laughs> restaurant. Yeah, that's a Japanese. Koi is a fucking fusion Japanese restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck are you? <laughs> well, go there in about a half hour. You'll see me. But wait. Also, so the, the so the ranch that he lived on, he said yeah. there's no more like cows or horses or anything. Yeah. Do you think there was ever once any bison? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Smartless is 100% organic and artisanally handcrafted by Rob Armjarf, Bennett Barbaco, and Michael Granteri. Smartless.